Today we're going to begin our discussion of intermolecular forces. I'm not sure if you recognize what this is. Today we worked with liquid nitrogen in the lab. This is another substance called uh, dry ice, or dry ice is actually carbon dioxide. Now we know carbon dioxide normally exists as a gas. What are the forces that hold it together to help it exist as a solid? So the first of all, to classify things as to the type of intermolecular force, you have to be able to determine first, are those things ionic or covalent? And so ionic or covalent. Remember, the key to knowing if something is ionic is it will be a metal and a nonmetal. So for example, sodium chloride is ionic. It's a metal and a nonmetal. And carbon dioxide is covalent. So only covalent things will have intermolecular forces. Only covalent. So please remember that as we go through. Ionic things have ionic forces and just make bigger particles. But covalent things have discrete units or particles, and we're talking about how they're joined. For example, if you have dry ice, there's going to be one carbon dioxide, one entire molecule here, that's attached to another carbon dioxide molecule, and that's the force we're talking about today. So first of all, you want to classify things as ionic or covalent, and the next thing you want to do is classify things as polar or nonpolar. Hopefully you recall from our discussion of bonding that things like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methane, which is CH4, and also if you have a single atom like a, like a halogen, or I'm sorry, like a, a noble gas here, those would be all considered nonpolar. There's not a negative end or a positive end, or partial negative or partial negative positive end on the particle. Now then we could also talk about we have polar particles. Now polar particles have a partial negative or and a partial positive side. For example, on water, there's a partial negative side next to the oxygen. And next to each hydrogen, I'll just draw one in here, is there's a partial positive side. Now we actually see that on both the hydrogens. So I actually went ahead and drew both those in. And so, for example, the more electronegative element pulls that shared pair of electrons, which we see here, and it is more electronegative and it has a greater share of those electrons, so that's partially negative. So oxygen is more electronegative, it pulls its shared pair more, and so it's partially negative. Ammonia is also polar. So the nitrogen here is partially negative, and all, each one of the hydrogens is partially positive. I can draw all those in. And hydrogen fluorine. Fluoride is the most electronegative element. Hydrogen is less electronegative. So the fluoride is partially negative. The hydrogen is partially positive. So if we were to draw a charge on the fluorine, it would be partially negative. And the hydrogen on this one would be partially positive. So each one of these molecules on the right-hand side is polar because there's a negative or positive end. The four particles that are on the left-hand hand side are, are nonpolar because there's not a negative or positive end. So how do these things bond to each other? Because we know, like for example, liquid nitrogen, for nitrogen to bond with the N2, there has to be some type of attraction. Well, there's three types of what we call intermolecular attractions. Now, this is an attractive force that's between molecules. One way I remember that is I grew up next to I-75 is an interstate that went in between states. Like it went through Kentucky, Tennessee, and Ohio, all Georgia, Florida. I was next to I-75. That's an interstate. It's between states. So intermolecular forces are forces between molecules or particles. Now, that we want to contrast that to a covalent bond. A covalent bond is an intramolecular force. That's within a molecule. Like we do intramurals. Those are sports that, were, that are within the school. So, for example, let's go, the, the, go through the three types of intermolecular forces. The first type is dipole-dipole. Now, dipole-dipole is an intermolecular force that exists in polar compounds. So in these polar compounds, there is a permanent partially negative side and a permanent partially positive side. I put dihydrogen sulfide as an example. The sulfur is partially negative and the hydrogens are partially positive. So what happens, we see, actually, there's going to be two types of forces here. There, what we see drawn between the sulfur and the hydrogen is a covalent bond. That is an intramolecular force. But the force between the separate H2S molecules, what we see right here, there's, where I drew this red line right between here, that would be a dipole-dipole force. Because a positive force from the hydrogen, partial positive, is attracted to the partial negative on the adjacent sulfur. So that's what we call a dipole-dipole force. Now one thing to keep in mind, at the, at, in a dipole-dipole force, a partial positive and a partial negative dipole attract each other. The other thing to keep in mind, 
that these are not very strong forces. They're only 1% as strong as covalent bonds. So you actually have a chemical reaction when you break the bond between sulfur and hydrogen. But if you break the bond between one H2S and another H2S, you've actually changed its state. So that's not a chemical change. That's what we call a physical change. So that's dipole-dipole. So dipole-dipole, polar compounds, and they have a permanent dipole. Now, the other type of attractive force is similar to dipole-dipole. We call it hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular force in polar compounds again, but these are, it's more of a specific group. These contain hydrogen, but hydrogen is bonded to a very electronegative element, actually one of the three most electronegative elements, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. These The difference in these two charges between the hydrogen and either the fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen creates an extremely strong dipole. And so, similar to the dipole-dipole, the positive dipole and the negative dipole attract each other. In water, we see this happen when you have liquid water or when water freezes and you have ice. Now, the covalent bond, the intramolecular force, is a bond between the hydrogen and oxygen there. Now, the intermolecular force, the hydrogen bond, it rep is represented by the dotted or the dashed lines, which I drew the arrow to here. So this right here that we see is the that's the what we call the hydrogen bond. So that is a type of intermolecular force. Now once again remember this hydrogen bond is weaker than the covalent bond, but it's still a very important bond. And notice when you break a hydrogen bond, you're melting, freezing, or changing state, but it's not actually a chemical change. So once again, it's much weaker than the covalent bonds, but it's stronger than the dipole-dipole force. Let's keep going. The, and so here's an example of a large hydrogen bond. Here are several water molecules attached. Now what you see here, these dotted lines, these three dots, represent the hydrogen bond. So that is a hydrogen bond there. That is a type of intermolecular force. And there you see the covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. The last type of bond we, we have is a London dispersion force. Now this is a type of bond between nonpolar compounds. Now you're like, how do they do that? Because there's not a negative or positive end. What happens, we see here, now normally we don't see a negative or positive end, but if one molecule is next to the other, it can create what we call a temporary dipole. Now there's a dipole drawn here, but it's not always there. So what happens when one molecule is next to the other, it induces a dipole in the adjacent molecule, and it's able to form a bond. That's why if you see I2, I2 is on the periodic table as being a solid, the reason being there are so many electrons and they can move and create what we call a temporary dipole and even what we call a nonpolar molecule. So this is the weakest type of intramolecular force when you're comparing the three. Now here's an example of London dispersion forces. So example, you have two atoms that are nonpolar. Then one atom gets close to the other. Then all of a sudden you have a partial negative on one atom and a partial positive on the other, then that induces a dipole in the adjacent atom, and then there's actually both atoms have partial negative and partial positives. You could have the same thing if you have a molecule or an atom. That's how a London dispersion force is created. It's only a temporary force. So the last thing you want to do is be able to look at molecules and say what type of intramolecular force. So if you had one CO2 next to another CO2, CO2 is nonpolar, so CO2 would be London dispersion force because that's two nonpolar molecules. If you had one N2 next to another N2, that would be another London dispersion force. Also, the next one, CH4, if you had two CH4s, that would also be a London dispersion force because it's nonpolar. And lastly, if you had a single atom, that would also be a London dispersion force because a single atom is nonpolar. <coughs> Excuse me. On the other side, you have three molecules that are polar. But notice every single one of these molecules has hydrogen attached to it, very electronegative element. Hydrogen next to nitrogen, hydrogen next to fluorine, hydrogen next to oxygen. Every single one of these on this side would be what we call a hydrogen bond because it's a hydrogen next to a very electronegative element. So these are hydrogen bonds. So a bond between one water molecule and another water molecule is a hydrogen bond. Now let's look at another slide. Only thing I changed here is notice the hydrogen is now attached to the sulfur. So this molecule right here, that would be considered a dipole-dipole. And we may refer to that as some people may call them dip-dips because it's a dipole 
the DIP and dipole dipole and also we see HCl dipole dipole and then actually we have pH 3 so those are all three examples of dipole dipole so that's it you should be able to look at molecules and tell me if they're London and aspersion dipole dipole or hydrogen bonding one of those three so good luck and we'll work on this tomorrow